Hi DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today we're going to be going over the range on the Quosis IQ2 Plus alarm system. So here I have a Quosis IQ2 Plus. It has the Power G daughter board card added. Now the one thing about the uh, IQ2 Plus is, is that they come in three different versions. And um, what that means by that is every single IQ2 Plus has a Power G daughter board card built in. So you're always going to have the Power G capability with any IQ2 Plus that you buy. What's going to change is the legacy daughter board card that's in it. There's three different legacy daughter board cards that you can use in the system. There's one that comes with a Honeywell and 2 gig daughter board card, which uses 345 megahertz. There's another one that comes with the Quosis and the Interlogix GE daughter board card that uses 319.5 megahertz. And then there's another one that uses the DSC, which is 433 megahertz. Now there's three different, there, those are the three different versions. And then obviously there's, uh, it goes more, it, each one of those, they have an AT&T version and they also have a Verizon version. So you want to make sure that whenever you're looking at the alarm system, you want to make sure you're getting the correct one. Now, normally the IQ2 Plus is really good if you're looking at replacing a system in a house that already has wireless sensors. So for instance, if I was moving into a house and it had wireless Honeywell sensors and I wanted to get the IQ2 Plus, instead of buying complete brand new sensors, I would just get the IQ2 Plus that has the Honeywell and 2 gig daughter board card, the 345 version. And um, I would make sure I get the correct AT&T or Verizon one. And then any other sensors that I need added on after that, let's say there's a, a detached garage, there's something that's further away that the normal sensors can't reach, I would use Power G sensors for it. Um, that would save you guys a lot of money. You won't have to buy new sensors. You can use the existing sensors. Again, if this is just an example, some of you guys may move into a house that has four, uh, that has the 433 megahertz. Some of you may move into a house that has the GE or Interlogix um, Quosis sensors. So you just want to make sure you're using the correct one. Um, now, it doesn't matter which version you get if you're starting fresh because you're going to more than likely be using PowerG sensors if you're starting with a brand new system just because PowerG pretty much is the same price, if not a little bit less than some of the sensors you'll see out there. And it also offers the best range. Um, so PowerG range is about 2,000 feet. Uh, now, remember, this is open air. So when you're trying to get a range to go through obstacles such as um, walls, doors, if you guys have cement, metal, brick, these are all objects that is harder for radio frequencies to travel through. So it's going to greatly decrease that range. However, it's 2,000 feet. Not many, you know, 2,000 feet, that's enough range for a normal sized house, apartment, even a business sometimes. Um, and if you guys are having any range issues, you guys can get a Power G repeater, which doubles the range. So instead of having 2,000 feet open air, you'll have 4,000 feet open air. So if your sensor is just not making it, you just need to add that Power G repeater. So basically, if you're starting fresh, you're getting the IQ2 Plus. That's going to be your range for the Power G. Now, if you're going to be getting legacy sensors, that work with the legacy daughter board card that's in your IQ2 Plus, your range is probably gonna drop a lot. Normal sensors usually give you anywhere from 100 to 300 feet open air. The only exception to this is Quosis's S-Line sensors. Those S-Line sensors actually have a range of, of up to 600 feet. But again, 600 feet open air, when it's going through obstacles and everything is gonna be greatly decreased. So. We normally recommend if you're doing Power G, just do Power G sensors if you're starting fresh. If you already have sensors in the house, then just buy the correct legacy panel. Um, so that's the range for Power G, right? 2,000 feet. It can be extended up to 4,000 if you buy a Power G repeater. You got the normal legacy sensors, which give you a range of 100, 100 to 300 feet, and then 600 feet if you're using S line. And again, this is all open air. And now let's talk about the Z-Wave range. If you're using normal Z-Wave range, you normally have up to 30 or 40 feet of range with Z-Wave sensors. I'm um, sorry, Z-Wave devices, not Z-Wave sensors. And then if you're using Z-Wave Plus devices, you usually have a range of 80 to 100 feet. Now remember, 
the only devices that can do Z-Wave hopping, which means the signal can bounce from one Z-Wave device to another, to another, to another, back to the panel, are the are the Z-Wave devices that actually get plugged in for power. Battery operated Z-Wave devices do not allow for Z-Wave hops. And when you guys are taking into consideration the Z-Wave hops, the signals can only hop a maximum of four times. So if you have a, a Z-Wave plug module that's all the way on one side of the house or a Z-Wave switch that's all the way on one side of the house, it can only hop from that switch one, two, three, four would be back to the panel. And that would be that fourth hop. Um, so you want to make sure that if you guys are using Z-Wave devices, normal Z-Wave 30 to 40 feet, Z-Wave Plus is 80 to 100 feet. Um, now, when I say Z-Wave devices, I'm referring to lights, locks, thermostats, switches, light bulbs, plug-in modules, garage door controllers. You cannot add Z-Wave security sensors to the system. You can add Z-Wave smokes, Z-Wave seals, Z-Wave doors, windows, motions. I know I always have a lot of people contact me. Hey, I'm looking at the Z-Wave sensor to work with my IQ2. Z-Wave security sensors do not work with the system. Z-Wave home automation devices work with the system. All right. So that will, that'll basically sum up the range for, or that'll sum up the range for all of the IQ devices that you may be looking at buying. Um, if you guys have any questions on range, if you guys have any questions on how to get your IQ2 Plus activated, please feel free to email us to support at alarmcrate.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable the little bell icon so that whenever we upload new videos, you guys get notified. I'm George and I'll see you guys next time.